Hey guys, welcome to AP Finance. Today we can learn about inflation in a simple and precise format. Let's jump right in. So let's start off by asking, what is inflation? Inflation is the increase in the price of goods and services over a period of time. The price change is measured from month to month or year over year. So you may be asking, what goods and services are we looking at? So this could be milk or food items, clothing, gas for vehicles, rent, hair grooming services, medical services, airfare prices, and even car prices. So let's understand inflation by taking an example of milk prices over time. So this is the USDA report on whole milk prices for various cities over the first 10 months of 2022. So let's take Atlanta, Georgia as an example. How are the milk prices in Atlanta over the first 10 months of 2022? So let's go month by month for milk prices in Atlanta. So 3.39 in January, 3.72 in February, 3.69 in March, and let's go till October. And finally, 4.28 in October. So as we can see, the milk prices were the highest in May 2022. So if we compare from January to October, Atlanta's milk price rose from 3.39 in January to 4.28 in October. So that means the milk price inflated by 89 cents in 10 months, or there was about 26% inflation in the milk price. So in the same way, we'll see increases in price or inflation for gas, clothes, rent, airfare, and other goods and services over time. So what could be the causes of inflation? Let's go over several direct and indirect causes of inflation. The first being production costs. The production factories can see an increase in raw material prices, which cause the producer to raise their price. So if the pizza cheese vendor raises the cheese price, then the pizza price would also increase. And this is also called cost push inflation. Another cause is increased demand. So when the demand for goods and services increase, the price of products may also increase. So during the COVID pandemic, face masks were in huge demand, which caused the mask price to go up. The third cause is supply chain issues, which is when suppliers are not able to provide raw materials, components, or sub-assemblies to producers. So for example, US automakers weren't able to manufacture cars because semiconductor chips used in cars were not supplied from China, which was because of COVID impacting their port operations. So money supply, the Fed Reserve Bank printed trillions of dollars in the form of stimulus checks during the pandemic for residents that were largely affected by COVID shutdowns. The economy was not able to produce goods and services at a normal rate, and too much money supply impacted the economy and it caused inflation. And finally, fiscal policy. So when the economy becomes slow or stagnant, the government can lower taxes or reduce interest rates, and overdoing that can cause inflation. And there are like many more subtle causes to inflation, but these are the main ones. So how do we measure inflation? There are two indexes used in calculating the inflation rate in the US. So the first one is the Consumer Price Index, or CPI, and the second one is the Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index, or PCE. Both measures have their own approach to calculating inflation. While CPI is the most popular one, the Feds prefer PCE. Let's discuss the CPI index used for measuring inflation. CPI stands for Consumer Price Index. The CPI is a measure of average price change over time in the prices paid by urban consumers for a basket of goods and services. So what are the features of CPI? The market basket is comprised of eight major groups. The basket has about 200 categories of consumer products and services, and there are about 80,000 items in the CPI basket that are price recorded each month. The CPI index measurement is managed by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, or the BLS. The CPI is for two population groups, CPIU, which is a CPI for all urban consumers, which covers approximately 93% of the total population, and CPIW, which is a CPI of urban wage earners and clerical workers, which covers 29% of the population. CPIW is used by the Bureau of Labor Statistics to calculate the cost of living adjustment, annual increase, and in social security benefits. So what are the CPI major groups? So there are eight major groups. For 
There's just food and beverages like milk, cereal, wine, and snacks. Second is housing, like rent and furniture, apparel, like shirts, dresses, and jewelry. Transportation, for example, gas for vehicles, airfares, and new cars. Medical care, for example, prescription drugs, doctor's fees, and hospital fees. Recreation, like TV, sports equipment, and even your pets. Education and communication, like college tuition, phone services, and computer software. And finally, other goods and services, like tobacco, smoking, funeral services, haircut, even more. Next, let's see the weightage of each group in the CPI market basket. So housing is 42.3%, transportation is 18.1%, food and beverages is 14.21%, and here are all the other groups. So as you can see, the top three groups are housing, transportation, and food and beverages, which add up to a total of 74%, or basically three-fourths of the CPI market basket. So with the CPI index, the weightings are assessed every two years and modifications are made if necessary. Personal Consumption Expenditure Price Index, also known as PCE, has a different approach to measuring inflation. It's a measure of prices that people living in the U.S. or those buying on their behalf pay for goods and services. Most importantly, the PCE formula considers for changes in consumer behavior and changes that occur in the short term. So what are the features of PCE? PCE uses data from GDP reports and supplier data. It looks at durable goods, non-durable goods, and services. Some examples of durable goods are houses, refrigerators, and cars. Examples of non-durable goods are pizza, paper towels, and food items. The Federal Reserve prefers the PCE index over CPI, and we'll discuss in later slides why the Feds like the PCE more. And finally, the PCE index measurement is managed by the Bureau of Economic Analysis, or the BEA. Now let's compare PCE composition with CPIs. PCE's top three groups are housing, food and beverages, and transportation, which is similar to what CPI has. PCE, however, has a smaller weightage with the housing group as compared to CPI's housing weightage. Now let's do side-by-side -side comparisons. CPI looks at urban household expenses, while PCE looks at U.S. household expenses. While CPI is the most popular, PCE is preferred by the Federal Reserve. CPI data source is household surveys, while PCE looks at GDP reports and suppliers. The major difference is CPI composition changes every two years, whereas PCE composition changes every quarter. And finally, CPI is produced by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and PCE is done by the Bureau of Economic Analysis. So why does the Federal Reserve prefer to use PCE price index? The first reason is PCE looks from a higher perspective, while CPI looks at a granular level. The second reason is PCE captures consumer behavior during rising prices. And the third reason is PCE composition changes every quarter and hence is more accurate with consumer purchasing behavior, while CPI updates composition every two years. So let's look at an example. If consumers experience higher inflation with beef prices, then they may switch to less expensive chicken. PCE captures such behavior change with consumers. So when inflation is high, food is expensive, utilities are expensive, gas fuel is expensive, rent increases, and mortgage interest rate increases, and airfare and other service cost increases. Inflation lowers your purchasing power. It reduces the value of savings. So for example, the $200 grocery shopping will give you fewer items than before inflation. If income doesn't outplace inflation, people are financially stressed. Companies lose purchasing power too as production costs go up, hurting their profitability. Within each CPI and PCE index, there are two types of inflation measures, headline inflation and core inflation. So in other words, we would now have headline CPI, core CPI, headline PCE, and core PCE measurements. Headline inflation looks at everything that CPI or PCE index measures. This is the full market basket as decided. 
Core inflation looks at core items in the market basket, so it excludes highly volatile food and fuel items. So when Russia-Ukraine conflict started, the crude price increased, causing CPI's headline inflation spike. This is where economists gauge the core CPI inflation to analyze how other items are inflated. They exclude food and fuel prices using core inflation measures. Core inflation is considered a better predictor of inflation going forward. For industries and businesses, the producer price index, or PPI, is used. So in the simplest definition, it measures the price change of items delivered by their suppliers. So a car company would be concerned about inflation in sheet metal prices, glass prices, and much more. So the PPI is the leading indicator for the CPI. So if a car company experiences inflation in its raw materials, the consumers buying cars will also see an increase in the car price, meaning that if PPI increases, very likely the CPI will too. Now let's understand what CPI data released by the Bureau of Labor Statistics looks like. The portion of the September 2022 CPI report coming from the BLS website is showed here for all urban population. On the left side are all categories and subcategories from the CPI market basket. And I'm just showing a small portion of a big list. The columns show the monthly percentage price change from the previous month. So for example, the food at home price increased by 1.4% in May 2022 from the previous month. The rightmost column shows the yearly price percentage difference. Here we're seeing how September 2022 numbers changed compared to September 2021. So in short, the CPI report here shows monthly incremental changes in prices as well as an overall 12-month price change. Let's look at the electricity category. The electricity price in September 2022 increased by 15.5% since September 2021. The fuel price went up by 58.1% in September 2022 when compared with September 2021 price was because of the Russia-Ukraine crisis. Overall, the CPI market basket shows 8.2% inflation in September 2022 since September 2021. This is also called year-over-year -year price change. Since we included fuel and food categories in computation, this is CPI headline inflation measure for the month of September 2022. Let's look at CPI year-over-year -year chart. The chart data spans from September 2008 to September 2022. Each data point represents a year-over-year -year price percentage change in the overall CPI basket. So for example, in July 2009, during the Great Recession, the goods and services prices went down or reduced by 2.1% when compared with July 2008. This is also called deflation. In January 2017, prices increased by 2.7% as compared to January 2016. June 2022 shows 9.1% CPI inflation as compared to June 2021. You can see the inflation skyrocket during the pandemic period shown in the time span. June 2022's 9.1% CPI is the highest level in more than 40 years. Finally, Fed's inflation goal is 2-2.5% to inflation per year. If the inflation is above the goal, they will implement corrective actions via interest rates. Let's review the PCE core inflation chart ranging from January 2010 to September 2022. The core inflation measure excludes foods and fuel prices. As we can see, PCE core inflation for January 2012 was 2.1% as compared to January 2011. February 2022 shows high 5.4% PCE core inflation compared to a year back. Like CPI, PCE inflation also skyrocketed during the pandemic period shown in the time span. This is PPI, or Producers Price Index Chart. This is inflation's impact on factories and businesses. During the pandemic time, the industries faced supply chain disruptions and raw material prices increased, causing PPI to skyrocket. So in conclusion, inflation is a very important macroeconomic factor. Inflation can impact consumers, producers, and the economy. Inflation reduces the purchasing power and value of savings. The economy lands in trouble when inflation outplaces income growth. Feds prefer the PCE core inflation index as it is a better predictor of inflation going forward, even though CPI is a more popular index. 
What are the corrective measures for taming inflation? Fed's inflation goal is from 2 to 2.5% inflation per year. So if the current inflation is much higher than the desired goal, then it needs to implement corrective actions. The Federal Reserve aims to reduce the demand for goods and services. The heated economy needs to be cooled down. The topmost tool Feds use is increasing benchmark interest rates, causing high borrower rates with loans, credit cards, and mortgage rates. This is done to slow down the spending behavior of consumers. The reduction in demand for goods and services would result in a decrease in inflation. Thank you so much for watching this video from AP Finance. I hope you liked it and learned something new. Please don't forget to subscribe down below and click the notification bell to be notified when we post.